City Lights. When Einstein arrived in San Diego by steamer in December 1930, he was, of course, greeted by hundreds of girls in uniform at the pier. They sang a song he vaguely recognized. Then the U.S. Navy marching band played O Holy Night because it was New Year's Eve. When the mayor drove him to Balboa Park, onlookers stood along the road waving white kerchiefs as if surrendering to his intelligence. He was ensnared in hours of speeches and greetings before being driven through Los Angeles to Pasadena, which was his destination. He was to spend the winter of 1931 here, talking with many of the greatest physicists in the United States. After a day of rest, he was driven up a long and winding road into the mountains. At the top, surrounded by a snowy pine forest, was the enormous white dome of the Mount Wilson Observatory. The flat plain of Los Angeles stretched far to the distant ocean, the sun an orange ball of fire on the horizon. The gaunt Edwin Hubble came out to greet him, then led him inside, where the massive telescope was positioned at an angle within a lattice frame of metal. Hubble had used this telescope to make his latest discovery that the farthest galaxies traveled faster away from us than the nearest. This proved yet another conclusion of relativity, one that Albert had doubted. When it grew dark, Hubble adjusted the telescope so he could view one of the most distant galaxies ever seen. He stood near Albert's shoulder, smoking a pipe, quietly describing several other galaxies just out of sight of the viewfinder. They talked as they returned to the car. Here, the city lights were illuminated, a galaxy of stars spread across the Los Angeles plain. The next day, he was brought to Hollywood to view the film sets. At lunch, Charlie Chaplin was called in, and they ate together. A natural friendship formed, as if their spirits had known each other for years. Chaplin was amused by Albert, his eyes alighting whenever he tried to explain anything about light or energy. They also both cared deeply about the growing turmoil in Europe. And as Albert told him about some of the fears after the war, Chaplin lowered his eyes and listened somberly. When it was time to depart, Chaplin gripped his hand in both of his and insisted that Albert come to the premiere of his latest film, City Lights. He laughed as Chaplin convinced him, you must experience this. Albert agreed. On the night of the premiere, he was beside Chaplin on the red carpet in front of the Los Angeles Theater both in their tuxedos. He wondered at the lights. He'd never seen so many, a million more than what his father had used to first light the Oktoberfest in Munich so many years before, even more than when he had visited Times Square. A crowd cheered up and down the street. He knew it was not just for him this time. There was a certain energy within the sound that was new. He leaned toward Chaplin. What I admire about your art is the universality. You don't say a word in your films, yet the world understands you. Chaplin smiled with his bright teeth. And look at you, he said. The entire world admires you, yet not a single person understands what you say.